Okay, getting your set on your end? I am. Excellent. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Alien Investigations, the only channel with an alien stiletto in its pocket and is happy to see you. I am your host, Stephen, and uh, we are one third of the way through the 2024 X File CCG virtual tournament, the pre uh, the pre playoff regular season portion of the tournament that is we're one third of the way through that at this point and obviously we've got lots more to go and just getting to the playoffs so there's plenty plenty more tournament play uh in the the rest of april and most pretty much all of may i would i would assume but it's been exciting thus far in fact we have one of the 14 contenders uh joining us for this matchup today uh which is an exhibition matchup uh it's um not part of not part of the uh regular season insofar as it, there's not going to be any impact on the record or the standings or you know future matchups when we get into playoffs none like that it's just exhibition fun stuff and my opponent uh for this evening is jonathan hagee joining us from kentucky how are we doing jonathan good doing really good and why don't I go ahead and put your screen up here? That makes more sense. Um, so, Jonathan, you are at this moment in time the leading contender for the 2024 Xbox CCG Virtual Tournament. Three wins, no losses, sir. You are completed, or you have wrapped up your portion of the regular season. You're just waiting for the playoffs to begin. And at that point, you know, that's when, you know, the stakes are going to actually uh, be a factor in this tournament. So what's your thought process at this point as you're waiting for the rest of the matchups to conclude for the regular season? Yeah, you know, I'm uh, kind of getting a feel for how everybody plays. I like seeing how everybody you know mixes some things up, seeing some stuff that I don't typically see or we don't typically see. And, uh, you know, also making uh, some fine tuning to my deck. I've, I've, not done that for tonight it's it's basically the same but, uh, i've already found some things i want to change and uh enhance a few things i mean i don't think there's going to be any major changes but you know Ooh, you, pr you don't want to probably don't, don't want to let your away. <laughs> don't let your uh, other 13 contenders know about that because well, otherwise you know, they've you seen your deck in action if you beat me in two turns then i might change a lot <laughs> <laughs> and to recap you have played against Alistair, Mike up in Canada, and lastly, Kurt. And so in each of those matchups, uh, um, I wouldn't say it was a decisive runaway game. It seemed like, the, well, except for maybe, I think there was, was one of them a rather fast one, and then the others kind of took a, a handful uh, of rounds in order to get to the finish line? Well, the game against Alistair was fast. And uh, yeah. I think all of us were surprised. Uh, mm -hmm. Then the one against Mike, to be honest, Mike really outplayed me. He uh, he asked more questions. He just didn't he just didn't get them right. Um, and then you know the game against Kurt, it, he had me to three X files. I had him to two. So you know it was as close as the game gets. And therein lies part of the the chaos and the beauty of this game insofar as like you could be uh, doing really well with completing site investigations, but when it comes to the guesswork, which is a crucial element, you might be lacking on it. The stars might not be aligning so well that evening and just one correct guess. And suddenly, you know, you're just, you know, cruising right to the finish line. And, you know, with the, uh, there's always an opportunity for your opponent to climb, to claw their way back. Sometimes, sometimes not so much. And again, that's just part of the fun of the game is just because you could uh, certainly construct a very refined deck, including uh, for a tournament, and you could still wind up uh, coming in second place with an opponent who just happened to be, you know, spot on with the questions. So, but yeah, but nevertheless, Jonathan, um, I, I'm going. I'm just going to go ahead and point out the fact that you and I have played a number of games on this channel, and the victories for you were few and far between. They so were, far as um, and part of that is part of that is you. You're you know you know these cards very very well. You know them much better than I do. Um, but, but last month, I think it was last month, I was off for three weeks. 
Mm-hmm. And I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to learn this. I'm really right. going to learn. Like, I, you know, I obviously knew how to play. I played at File Fest and all that. But it's like, I'm going to really learn these cards. I'm going to build a really refined deck. And I'm going to, because most of the time when we play, I kind of threw a deck together kind of last minute. And they were all kind of similar. There wasn't, there wasn't a lot of refining going on. Mm-hmm. But this time I had the time. And and I really wanted to make the effort to do it, uh, and and so far it's paid dividends. So, indeed, because as I was as I was saying, it's like it, the wins prior to the tournament had been non-existent for you, but this is a stark contrast. Three three wins, zero losses, my friend. That is a hot streak um, as far as this, as far as this game goes. And so you're performing very well, well above like I would say. I mean, generally like. At all expectations it's like I, you wouldn't i was not expecting anyone to maybe get all three of their regular season matchups as well i you know i figure you know two and one you know one to two somewhere like that but no no you uh you just tore through it and quickly too faster than anyone else thus far and and as i said we we're only one third of the way through so there's still lots to be seen we've got several of the contenders we have not seen play a single game yet uh, so there is a lot of unknowns, and so there's still plenty of time to to for other people to get their game scheduled. But thus far, like as I said, you're leading it, so that's a great feeling at this point, isn't it? Yeah, I'm I'm happy to do it. I'm, uh, I mean, it's I wanted to get mine out of the way, uh, just because if I could get them done quickly, I could you know not have to not have to think about it, stress over it, and then I could I could really see. Um, in close succession, whether how the deck performed good or bad, mm-hmm. uh, and that way, yeah. all of those things were fresh and together. And I'm not trying to remember. It's like, oh, let me go back and think, or let me go back and watch and try to mm-hmm. figure out what was and was not good. That way, when it came time to refine it, it was all fresh in my mind. And, uh, and what for you would you say was? the the bet the the highlight of the three games that you've done thus far what was your favorite play or the best moment that stuck out for you from the three games that you've played Hmm. um oh it was definitely uh the last game against kurt when it was a 50 50 guess uh and you know and he had a 33 percent if i got it wrong he had a 33 Mm -hmm. percent chance so it was like i was I was really stressing, am I going to actually take this shot? But then I was like, you know, if I don't do this, he's probably going to investigate the next one. And he's going to get, you know, he's going to get to ask the question and then take a shot. So he's going to very potentially get it down to one without even having to, you know, uh, take a risk. So I was like, yeah, I've got to do it. And it, it was a it was a literal do or die moment at that point, my friend. Do or die, and yeah, you uh, yeah, but you flip you you did, you flipped the fifty you flipped the coin and you came out, yeah, you came out shining in that. So well done on that. That was actually that was a that was a nail biter of a game because as you said, you guys were down to like two and three at that point. And it was a pretty much um, if I recall a neck in that game the whole way. You guys were narrowing each other's X files down. Um, pretty much uh, spot on, like pretty much in, in tandem as it was progressing. And so it was not really a clear winner, um, you know, from the onset. It was just, you know, a deep here, a successful side investigation there. And then, as you said, got each, you guys got it down to like two or three X-Files remaining. And so, yeah. Cool so, thing. yeah, it was, one that, it was riveting. That was a cool thing in that game, too. I, I liked it. Was, uh, it was the only game I've ever played or seen where, Three deep throats got played. We almost saw the max. So. <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> and I don't think we've seen that in any of the games thus far. Um, but I, I, I would wager at some point with the many games as we've got planned for this X Files CCG tournament, that is probably going to happen because a lot of people are are um, packing deep throats in their decks. If not, and I do want go ahead. I say everybody's got to put two in there, except for me. <laughs> but I'm part of the tournament, though. So as I, as I said at the start, this is going to be a an exhibition game. A um, uh, this is going to be just a for fun um, because I saw Jonathan tear through the regular season, and I just thought, well, that's a pretty damn good looking deck there. I want to take a crack at it. So I'm bringing my 
oh my would be tournament deck i guess you could call it to this game which again exhibition game so jonathan this is not going to impact your standing this is not going to impact uh where you fall in the assign the assign the assignation of the the matchups in the playoffs this is just an exhibition game just for fun just give me a chance to um get a little bit of x files ccg action um firsthand because as i've been just adjudicating these matches it really haven't had much chance to uh to get some play um so this is yeah just a chance and eh, just a chance to test out that deck um of yours because this is going to benefit you, my mm -hmm. friend. It's going to give you an extra bit of... Uh, it's um, one thing to build a strong deck mm -hmm. when nobody knows what you have. It's another thing when you know everything. Uh, yep. If you still can do it, then it's a pretty solid deck. That's right. So I do know every single card that is in Jonathan's deck. He doesn't necessarily know mine. I, I mean, I did offer... For full disclosure, I did offer to give Jonathan my deck list. He didn't think it was necessary because, as he said at the start, he, he did not change anything in his deck. He's keeping it the same. So when he gets to when we get to the finals, that's when everyone's going to have a chance to amend their decks, take some things out. Uh, they could do a drastic overhaul if they really want to. Um, but so Jonathan, this, this is going to be an extra game for you to test your deck's metal, see what's working and what's not. So you get another chance to figure out oh, what could be refined going into the playoffs. So yeah, you're going to benefit strongly from this. And again, because I know what you're working with, you know, that that's going to be a solid test of your deck. I'll, I'll, I'll say to be fair, I didn't necessarily go hard. Like I was more or less going for a utilitarian uh, setup here. Just getting what I need, what you guys normally expect from a deck against me um that's what you that's what's happening here though knowing that you had two deep throats i will admit i i did include a couple of deny everything's in here <laughs> that's about probably the only distinction i you know that would distinguish this one from a lot of the other decks that i make um but i do want to also point out uh we do have the live chat going so if anyone's tuning into this live they can post some comments in the in the comments and we can read them off during the game in fact i do have a little bit of a giveaway happening for uh anyone who's tuning in live if you are not one of the 14 contenders for the tournament and also if you're not uh mr mike perrine who is my co-host for this tournament anyone else this giveaway is uh open to you so the first uh was well, i would say the first two people at this point uh who chime in who are not part of the tournament will get a chance to uh win an autographed detective manners card signed by larry muster back at file fest in uh, september and uh the way we're going to do this is um jonathan is going to play for one person and i'm going to play for the other and whoever and if i win the person I'm playing for gets the the sign manners card. If Jonathan wins, and the person he's playing for gets the sign manners card, and first one who who has chimed in who is not part of the uh, tournament is uh, Daryl H. Um, uh, fairly new to our Discord community, actually. So Daryl, you're one of the two right off the money there. So at some point, uh, um, I might need you to send me your ad shipping address. Um, we'll see what happens with this matchup. So one of us is going to be playing for you. We'll just need someone else to chime in who's not part of the tournament. And we also have Mr. David Peace joining us. Uh, <laughs> uh, there needs to be a most wanted stamp on that Detective Manners card. Seriously, I need that autograph for handwriting now. It's just linking into the Kevin Moore spot. <laughs> Jonathan, you're not wearing the... Uh, you're not wearing the uh, Kevin Morris Mafia shirt tonight. Uh, is that oh, I take I'm wash? wearing my, uh, one of my ex other X Files shirts. I want to believe shirt. This is one of the ones I wore to File Fest. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can't really. Make, it's a little dark, so I can't yeah, quite make it out. But it's, a, uh, it's, a black, yeah. it's a black kind of picture of the poster that Mulder had above his desk, is what it is. It is. Excellent. Dark room in here. Yeah, but that's cool that you got a very thematic and on-brand uh, x file shirt uh, for this matchup, so bravo on that. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we got Mike Green also joining us, my co-host Mike. Um, so, yeah, you and I are going to be getting back to the swing of things this weekend because we got quite a few matchups um, scheduled um, for the next few days. We've got, uh, I think, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but uh, maybe I'll post it before... Um, 
before we sign off tonight. Um, so Jonathan, um, why don't we uh, get started with introducing our team of agents before we get into this? I'll let you do the honor, sir. Well, mine uh, obviously hasn't changed. It's my tried and true quartet of Agent Fox Mulder, Alex mm -hmm. Krychek, uh, Jerry LaMana, and Albert Holstein. Excellent. And uh, I do want to point out uh, that uh, Krychek and Holstein are the two most recurring agents in the tournament decks, and for good reason. I mean, Al Al uh, Albert Holstein's got a pretty badass effect that can usually get you through one round unscathed and of course Krychek he brings a hell of a lot of long range combat to a matchup so he's going to hold he's going to hold out pretty well against uh, some adversaries and he's got a lot of subterfuge uh, to boot so he can uh, he can solo some sites that are um, requiring a subterfuge skill check in order to uh, get that question so Krychek's a uh, a one man wrecking ball, really. So uh, he's a good choice. Um, but I will, uh, I, I will uh, go ahead and introduce my agents, uh, for which uh, neither of those two leading ones are present. I, I actually like. I was building my, I was building my team of agents with the notion, of, like knowing what agents you were bringing, because I was like, oh, I don't want this to be, like, pretty much. Uh, a mirror uh, of like, like pretty much the same agents on both sides. Like I had to, de uh, de um, had to you know deviate a little bit because uh, when I'm doing an alien investigation theme deck, I'm usually going with uh, Mulder and Hosting. The, those are usually the givens uh, when you're doing an alien investigation theme deck. Mike knows what I'm talking about because he's usually rocking that in his decks as well. But, like I said, I really didn't want to have a team that is pretty much the spitting image of yours, Jonathan. So I went a little different for this. Um, but I do have uh, Fox Mulder as my lead agent. And joining him is going to be Agent Fred Nemhauser from the 1013 expansion. Agent Mo Box. Dr. Charles Burke. And last but not least, Jonathan. You go ahead and say what my last agent is. You know who it is. Well, it's Manners. I mean, who else would it be? <laughs> of, course. of course it's Manners. I mean, come on. It, it's my boy. Yeah. And of oh, course, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I should be playing with the autographed one that I'm going to be giving away. <laughs> Might as well. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let me just go and grab that one out while we're getting set up here. So, yes. Um, yeah, normally, if I'm play doing an alien investigation theme deck, I'm usually... Yeah, Mulder hosting, but like I said, I just didn't want it to be like this uh, pretty similar looking team there. So I went a little different, changed things up a bit. Um, and so, yep, actually, so here's the sign manners right here. So that uh, one lucky winner is going to take home and go ahead and sleeve that baby up right there. Cool. Let's set that one off to the side there. All right, so. I think uh, I think our, our teams are looking good, but oh, you know what? There's well, there's one other thing I'm going to do, Jonathan. I'm going to make a, a last minute uh, change in of my. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a last minute change if you don't mind. I'm going to take this Agent Mulder card and set it to the side. For this, for this uh, I think because I'm playing against the leading contender for this tournament, I think it's time to call in the big guns. <laughs> So I'm going to use the Agent Fox Mulder pewter card. And this thing is heavier than it looks, people. It's like a freaking paperweight. And so this, ladies and gentlemen, if anyone who's not aware, is a prototype. And there's only five of them in existence. They were designed by United States Playing Card Company uh, back in 96, 97. And again, this was a prototype. It was never released to market they did even go so far as to make a box for it um that came with um, a premier starter deck and all that so yeah uh, they made uh five of these they made a couple of scullies and again they were uh never released and and they are considered by a lot of us to be kind of like a holy grail type of relic uh, that uh, those of us who are avid fans of the game just love a chance to own. And I've had the honor to 
uh, be a steward for it for the last six months. This is um, actually um, the property of Mike Perrine, my co-host for this tournament. And this is actually going to be a bit of a, a send-off for the pewter for it is going to be returned to its rightful owner next week. I will be shipping it back to Mike uh, next week. And so it will be back on display in the Matt and Mike's X-Files CCG studio for all of the future episodes on that channel. So that is where you can expect to find it going forward. So part, so part of my, uh, part of my, uh, team plan here, Jonathan was to include the, uh, Fox Mulder pewter because it is a last hurrah. So there was no question I was going to have Fox Mulder on my team. So yes, this is his, uh, so this is his last appearance on this channel, and so I'm going to give him his three trusty tokens. So he's all set to go. I think I've done a couple of games with him, and um, including at File Fest, actually. So yeah, I think I I lost the game to Nathan when I used uh, when I played uh, against him using the pewter. So yep, um, this is his last game. So Mike, on its way back to you, my friend. Excellent. So Jonathan, I think. Um, I think we're pretty much ready to go. Um, you got your hidden X file picked out, sir. Right there. Excellent. And I've got mine right here. So name the name of the game, ladies and gentlemen, is as it always has been to be the first to identify your opponent's hidden X file. And there are forty-one possibilities to choose from. Oh, Jonathan, uh, this is tournament rules here. You're supposed to send me the identity of your X file before uh, we get this started. So, you know. Send Send it my way. I'm kind of short. <laughs> it's all good. All right. So actually, uh, I should mention this. So tournament rules apply to this exhibition matchup as well. So all the uh, all of the restrictions that the 14 contenders are bound by, this applies here. And I think for the most notable one is going to be if we should play multiple bluffs on a particular site. We reveal them all at once. We pay for them all at once, and so that that is um, that is something I'm not necessarily a fan of doing in my normal friendly games. But again, these are tournament rules, tournament style going on here, so that's what we're doing. Any questions, sir? Before we get started, I don't think so. All right. Well, then, at that case, I think we're ready to decide which of us is going to be going first. So here we have my two trusty tokens. So. You pull the one with the X, Jonathan. You're going to start off as the investigating player, sir. So tell me, which is it going to be, right or left? Let's go with left. Left hand. You're going to be starting off as the conspiracy player, my friend. And I will be starting off as the investigating player for the first round. And then, of course, we'll pass it back and forth. And so, um, well, we don't have... Um, well, we have uh, Daryl... Um, who is going to be one of our two people playing to win. So, you know, I was kind of hoping we would get a, a bit of more turnout, but again, <laughs> this channel well, right is... Now he's, right now he's getting the card. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, at this point, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, well, yeah, maybe we'll just... I'll just send it to Daryl since he'll, he's the only non-contender who tuned in then. So thank you for watching, Daryl. <laughs> just uh, send me your address. Uh, you can find me in Facebook or Discord. You know, You know where to find me. All right, Jonathan. Let's draw our seven, my friend, and let's get this game started. Okay, so I've got my seven cards here, and I'm going to draw another card to kick off the briefing phase. Round one, we are good to go. Okay. And so, Mike, uh, this is, as I said, this is my would-be tournament deck. So, uh, with insofar as the uncut sheet that I'll be getting at the end of this tournament, so this is this is it. So, um, I'll be uh, eventually getting that deck list to you for when we are going to be doing. You, if you have any updates on when that is going to be happening, because I know you got some plans. You and uh, David Peace actually have some plans for that. If you want to share, feel free to post it in the live chat. I would love to. Love to get an update on that because it's pretty cool, you know, the uncut sheets being uh, printed for for this tournament. I know you have a few 
I know you have a few of the commercial, well, I say the commercial ones, I don't know how widely released, but you have a few of them that Mike Mackey has been selling for years and years, Jonathan. In I've fact, got them all. I, I don't know, you have them all. It's like, you have so many, I don't even know how you find space on your walls to accommodate all of them. I'm having to build rooms. <laughs> That's true. It's a work in progress. Okay, I've had enough time to look at this deck here. So let's let's start off by looking at my team's resource points. Mulder has two, and we all know he'll be using those to purchase cards in each of the briefing phases. Mobox has one. Charles Burke has one. Dete uh, not Detective Agent Nemhauser has one, and Detective Manners has zero. So that's a total of five, and that will take my resource pool up to ten. I'll point out that we are using the Lotus app to track our resource points and our conspiracy points. And I think, yeah, I think I'm fairly okay with what I have here. So I'll just take the two for Molder, and I'll take two off the top of my deck, Jonathan. I'm going to turn it over to you so you can sell any cards you want to beef up that conspiracy pool. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is play Blue Plate Special. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I'll admit I got a couple of those in my deck. Well, you know, it's a great freebie. <laughs> it's just fun. Yeah, and it's always fun to see, like, what's, you know, what card comes up. Yeah. Let's see. So which card is it in this case? Bill Mulder, which in this case I'm going to sell. You know, let's see that. Uh, so can you read off what exactly what Blue Plate says? Because I don't have it in front of me. Obviously. Yeah. Play the deck. card and flip over the next card in your bureau deck. If that card is playable this turn, you may play it for zero, either resource or conspiracy. If you do not play it this turn, you discard it. Okay, I guess that, yeah, I guess that works because it's not playable, um, because it's a resource well, card, and yeah. so. But it's well, it's. But, I don't know, it's he, he did it during briefing, so I think it's I think it's fine. Um, I've never I've never done that before. I usually kind of play it, kind of like deeper into the round, but I, I'm okay with it. I'm, I don't think anyone's gonna object to it. But yeah, that's a new one on me. But uh, it seems like it would be okay. How would it go? How would, how would it that be adjudicated? Well, let's uh, let's put it, put it this way: How would it be adjudicated in the tournament? Because that's how we. Should, I would have, that's first, how we should first play. the question mark has to appear over my head, and then I have to hem and haul over it. Um, I and ultimately I would be like, yeah, because it's a. Um, it says if it's not playable this turn, you have to discard at the end. So it doesn't seem to suggest that you can't do something else with it. it like uh, in this case. That was my thing. Yeah. I hadn't bought and sold yeah. yet, and there's no limit on when you can play it. You, you know, you pretty much play it right. anytime. It's yeah. So, but yeah, like I said, it's a new one on me since we normally don't. I, I feel like generally we see it played like during investigation phase, generally speaking. But yeah, I'm good with it. Have right. at it. I'm gonna Pitch sell that it. bill mover. Well, come on. I'm going to sell it for those three, and then mm -hmm. uh, that's it for me. Okay. That's no all you're buying. selling? No, no buying? Okay. In that case, it's back right back to me. And we'll continue on past the um, healing phase since we're just getting this game started. And I don't have any equipment cards in my hand, so we're going to skip past the requisition phase as well. And for the fourth phase deployment, I'm going to send every one of my agents out to the field. They all... Uh, they all did a. Uh, they all got their car rental from La their lariat car rental, and they just uh, piled in like uh, like clowns. <laughs> so, <laughs> Chuck, Burke was, Chuck Burke drew the short straw, or he drew the Chuck Burke drew the that he drew the long straw, so he's the one who had to sit in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. We got all of the agents are out in the field section of the table now. So next step is going to be case assignment. And oh, you know, you know what I haven't done actually? I haven't played in a while, Jonathan. I'm a little rusty. 
what haven't I done that I always do at uh, the first round in which I'm the investigating player? Oh, I figure you're going to have a look. <laughs> have a look? Yeah, have what a do look. You do you, oh, wait a have minute. A look at I'm, I'm so used to you having hosting right now that yeah. I would. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're not going to look yeah. at your hand because I don't have the host scene to do that. But I am going to take a look through my deck and get me a You're witness, <laughs> courtesy of Detective Manners. I normally do that in the briefing phase, but as I said, I haven't played in a, in a few yeah. weeks. I, I'm, a, I'm a little rusty, so bear with me. And Mr. David Peace is uh, tuning in, uh, so <laughs> he'll be happy to know that the uh, witness I'm about to call forth oh, is his oh, heart. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, it, yeah. You know, this month to go get the shirt on, because <laughs> I am going to get Mr. Kevin Morris as soon as I find him. I should go Let's see it. Hold it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just waiting for David to to post a comment about that. He, come on, David. This is my tournament deck. Of course, I'm going to have Kevin Morris in here, and there he is. There so. He is. There he is. Well, okay, so actually I had a recent conversation with Guillaume about this. Um, when you do Manners token, he goes because Manners effect states that you discard a token, search through your bureau deck, and add a witness card to your hand. So in so in the event that you want you played a card that would affect what's in my hand, you know, that option needs to be available to the conspiracy player. So Nevertheless, so I've added Kevin Morris to my hand, and I'm going to go ahead and play him, unless, Jonathan, you have anything you need to do at this point? No, and uh, I don't know. Do you actually have to tell somebody? I mean, we obviously know who it is. Uh, it does say show the witness to your opponent. Yeah, okay. it you does do say. Yeah. As if anyone didn't know, I'm going to get Kevin Morris yeah, for my know, We all know who it is. <laughs> no brainer. And I'm going to use um, Mo Box's rp token to pay for part of kevin morse because he has the keyword alien investigation and mobox pays for alien investigation and occult investigation card so i'm only going to be paying for mr kevin morse and i'm gonna put him down in my bureau section of the table it doesn't really say where he's supposed to go but for those who do not know kevin morse adds one to your pool every time a keyword alien investigation or evidence collection card is played and Speaking of which, I'm going to play a couple of those at this point. Specifically, Coastal Northwest Oregon, uh, which is where uh, my co-host Mike Green hails from. And I'm also going to put down Miller's Grove, Massachusetts. I'm going to use two of Mulder's three tokens to pay for those two sites. And he has one remaining. The two sites are as follows, Jonathan. Coastal Northwest Oregon is an affiliation and alien investigation keyword card. So that's a alien investigation foresight prerequisite with an affiliation question, should it be successful? And Miller's Grove, Massachusetts, is also an alien investigation keyword site, but it also has a keyword result. So alien investigation four, alien investigation four, affiliation and result. And Mr. Kevin Morris is going to generate two to my pool because each of these has the keyword alien investigation. And now, Jonathan, I'm going to turn it over to you for bluff, sir. I am going to put one bluff on Oregon, one on the other one. One on each. Interesting. Okay. Well, first things, I got a couple things to think about here. All right. So I think you're. Mm, all right, so here's what I'm, I think I'm going to do. First things first, I'm going to play Reading the Signs for zero. And that, Jonathan, is played on a team in the field. If the team makes an occult investigation for skill check, they may take two conspiracy points from their opponent's conspiracy pool and add them to their resource pool. Fox Mulder has three occult investigation, and Chuck Burke has two. I've and already projected so, my two. <laughs> good man. I've, I've got, I'm going to add two to my resource pool, which takes it up to 10. And we'll send that one to the trash bin. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play an event card before we head into investigation, because this card is crucial upon it being before they're investigating. 
and that is alien discretion, which I'm going to play on a team about to investigate a site with alien investigation as a prerequisite. Discard all cards assigned as bluffs at that site. X equals the number of bluffs at that site, and I'm going to play that on Coastal Northwest Oregon, and I'm going to pay two for that um, to pay for the card and to negate the one, well, not negate, but to do away with the one bluff that's on that site, which was what, by the way? Laser barrier. Laser barrier. That was a good one, even though I think with, well, they actually know that would have done me in because uh, I've got seven alien investigation to go around. I'm going to set Miller's Grove aside with a, uh, I'll put a face down, random face down card on it right there. So that's going to represent the bluff. Everyone's going to be heading into the investigation at Coastal Northwest Oregon. So we're in the investigation phase at this point, and we're going to be applying our team's alien investigation skills to it, for which Mulder has four, Mobox has two, and Charles Burke has one for a total of seven. That's it. You've got it. I got it. Excellent. So pretty easy, smooth, pretty easy, smooth investigation, right, Jonathan? I didn't need to have hosting to get me through that. (laughs) All right. So because the team's investigation in coastal Northwest Oregon was successful, we got ourselves an affiliation question coming your way, Jonathan. And I'm going to just start from the top. Is by any chance your X-Files affiliation alien? (laughs) Yes, it is. Wow. Wow. This is going to be a short exhibition game, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I say that, but I've seen, we have seen plenty of games where the very first question is correct. And then it just becomes just um, like, it, it seems to stall with the subsequent investigations getting upended at every turn. So <laughs> this is in no way um, a decisive win because Jonathan still has yet to play. All right. So yeah, we've uh, scratched off. Quite a few possibilities. I've got you down to eight remaining. And I'm going to refrain from taking a crack at identifying your X fault at this point, not just because I don't want you to get a penalty question, but also because I do want to get you, I do, I do want you to have a chance to, to uh, show off that deck. It was a lucky break. It happens. It All happens. Right, so we're going to discard Coastal Northwest Oregon. And as I said, Miller's Grove is uh, going to be postponed because I don't have anything to address that bluff at this point. So we're going to revisit it in a later round. Let's now head into the debriefing phase. And I'm currently sitting on six cards, Jonathan, and I'm going to keep all of them. What about you, sir? I'm sitting on four, so I'm good. And with that, we'll pass it over to you. Draw that free card. Got the free card. And let's see. So... Moving on in into briefing. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's see. Both Mulder and Crycheck, the res they generate is four, and Holstein and Lamana generate one each for a total of six. And of course, we know Mulder has to take two. Uh, and I think. I will take Molders two and two more. So four cards total. And that leaves you with what, seven? That leaves me with seven. Seven, excellent. And I pass it to you. Thanks. And I'm just going to sell one card. Message from the stars for five. That's going to take my pool up to 10. I think I'll get just a couple of cards with that, and that'll take my pool down to eight. So I'll draw, I'll buy two, and I'll pass it back to you. All right. Let's see. So I don't have any healing, uh, and I am not going to requisition anything at this time. So then I will move on into deployment, and I'm going to deploy everybody. Everyone's going out to the field? Everybody's hanging out. Excellent. All right. So where are we going, potentially? Uh, We are potentially going... to either... Arlington, Virginia, 
or Icy Cape, Alaska. All right. So Arlington, Virginia is an affiliation. Correct. And a collection. Yes. And, and Icy Cape is evidence collection and result, if memory serves. Your memory serves well. Perfect. And Excellent. I'm using molders to a token each to pay for those. Sounds good. I'm going to put one bluff on each site. All right. I'm going to send... I'm going to swap these where they're at just because it's easier. Sure. I'm going to send. Um, no, then I'm going to swap my bluffs too. So. Yeah, yeah. Molder and Crycheck to Icy Cape. Molder and Crycheck, okay. And Mana and Holstein to Arlington. Sounds good. Which which site would you like to begin your investigation? Uh, how about we start with Icy Cape? All right. Tell us about your team's evidence collection skills. Uh, Mulder brings two and Crycheck brings two and evidence collection is four plus. So we make the skill check with just barely. Excellent. Bluff pending, of course. Bluff and that pending. is unnatural aging. And I'm going to pay four for that card. It was face down. So the cost of five is reduced to four. And I'm going to force a team. I'm going to force the team to make a Sciences 4 skill check. If they fail, choose one agent to go to the hospital. The chosen agent permanently loses one health. An agent's permanent health may never be reduced below one. So, Jonathan, do you have anything in your hand that you would like to play to negate that, uh, that dreadful bluff? Mm -hmm. Hmm. No, it doesn't look like it, unfortunately. Right. And it doesn't say um, choose one. It says choose one agent, so that must be my choice then. Let's go ahead and send, um, we'll send Crycheck over to the hospital so his health is going to go down from five to four and so he'll no longer be able to contribute his evidence collection to that site so it's going to make you a little bit shy at this point uh so with regards to unnatural age and jonathan uh Krychek is not really he's not necessarily he's not damaged in so far as you, is his health is just now going to be four going forward so you don't have to do any healing in the next round when you're the investigating player He'll right, just be able to put the tokens on him to remind me that it's four instead of five. Yep. Sounds good. And a natural agent in the trash bin there. So uh, you're coming up a little shy on the evidence collection at this point, my friend. You got two from Mulder. Anything anything you can uh, play to get yourself out of this jam? No, it doesn't look like it on that one. All right, then. So it looks like uh, the investigation into Ice Cape is uh, coming up cold. And all is not lost, though, because you got another site in play. Yeah, let's see how that one goes. All right. Tell us about your team's occult investigation skills. So that one, um, it is occult investigation four plus, and Holstein makes four on his own. Indeed, uh, he does. Oh, wait a sec, John. I think I, I think I paid for... You know what? I paid for the bluff. I played for the bluff of my resource pool because I was like, "Why do I still have eight? So, yeah, that's what it should be. I had eight and eight because I bought two conspiracy. I bought two cards after selling message from the stars, so that took me up to ten. Then I bought two cards, took it down to eight, paid four for the bluff. So yeah, four. All right, sorry about that. I was using the wrong pool. Anyway. So I've got four remaining. All right. So anyway, so you said you have enough uh, cult investigation skills. Uh, hosting alone makes that skill check there. And the bluff that I have on that site is dun, 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 the, mailman. the mailman. 
So while he's not going to upend your investigation, though, he is going to uh, be stealing one of your team's token, one of your team's game effect tokens. And for the cost of three, I'm going to take Albert Hosting's token, and I'll I'll go ahead and give it to uh, my boy Manners over here. Unless you got something you want to play to negate that card. Uh, my kingdom for a Langley. <laughs> and in that case, Manners has been awarded another token for which he can use to call forth the witness should he be so inclined. Then Albert Hosting is uh, looking a little shabby now without that sweet ass game effect token of his. So I'm going to send the mailman to the trash bin, Jonathan, and unfortunately because I only have one conspiracy point left. I don't have anything in my hand that's going to be able to stop you. So, bully for you. You get a question, sir. Mm. And it's affiliation, just like me. So, hey, there's a chance you might get it right. Well, you know what? I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ask the same way. Is your affiliation alien? Uh, I think that's going to be a nay on that. But let me tell you. Yeah, no, it's a nay. Sorry, my friend. It was a good try, though. And on the plus side, you did eliminate four, or sorry, you did eliminate eight possibilities from that four, long list of 41, for what it's worth. Oh, well. And you can still take a guess if you feel so inclined, because guess what? I already know your X-Files affiliation, so if I get a penalty question, the only thing I'm going to be able to ask is an identity question. It is going to be one in eight, but... Like I said, it's not going to get me a characteristic question. So it's food for thought. I'm good. You're good? I'm good. You know how epic it would be if you took a 1 in 33 <laughs> chance and you get it right? <laughs> well, let's see. I'm only, yeah. Maybe I, I would. Just do it because I'm gonna get like I'm gonna guess one yeah, of eight. Mean, so. Yeah, it goes from eight to seven, so it's not that big a yeah. deal. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, yeah, it's like, yeah. one of these days, one of us is gonna make that kind of a guess, and it's gonna be right. But you never know; it might be tonight. Is your X file Donnie faster? My X file is not Donnie faster. Good try, though. And so I'm gonna peruse the. Eight alien X files on there, so I have obviously a slightly better chance of getting it right than Jonathan did. Um, I think because it worked last time, I'm going to start once again from the top. Jonathan, by any chance, is your X file alien abductors? My X file is not alien abductors. <laughs> oh. For a moment there, I thought I saw a, a bead of sweat appear on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we also have uh, Paul, uh, one of our other contenders in the tournament. Yes, Paul, I am using the Mulder Pewter for this matchup because, as I said at the start of this recording, it is going to be sent back to Mr. Mike Perrine, the rightful owner of it. And so I thought I'd give it a, a nice send-off by letting it uh, have a shot at Jonathan's um, winning deck. So, yep. We have a little bit more fun with this card before it goes into the mail system to head back to Oregon. Okay, so, Jonathan, you have uh, asked your identity question. I have asked my penalty question. And so now, I think we have nothing else to do but to head into the debriefing phase, right? That's right. I've discarded the site, and I am holding seven, and I will keep seven. I'm holding five, and I'm going to retain all of them. Ready to pass it back to me? Yes, sir. In that case, I'll get myself a free card, and we'll get ourselves a new round. Okie doke. So, we have, once again... Two resource points from Mulder, one from Box, one from Fred Namhauser, and one from Charles Burke. So that's going to take my resource pool up from 8 to 13. And my hand's looking a little mangy, Jonathan, so I think I'm going to 
think I'm going to buy four with that. And so that'll leave me with nine in the pool. Four cards. Over to you, sir. Super. I am going to sell hospital crash cart for four. And I am going to buy three. Or wait a minute, two. I'm going to buy two. Two. Leaves you with eight? Leaves me with eight. Okay. Uh, fun fact, Hospital Crash Cart is one of the more recurring equipment cards in the 14 tournament decks. And uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty easy guess, Jonathan, but if you had to guess, which equipment card do you think is the most popular equipment card amongst the 14 of you taking part in this tournament? Shotgun. It's the best one Either. to say. <laughs> yeah, is <laughs> easily the shotgun. Um, yeah, I think the if I, I don't have it in front of me, but I think yeah, the hospital crash cart is up there. But also, the alien stiletto is uh, yeah, Paul. Yep, shotgun. <laughs> yeah, John. Yeah, you guys. Uh, I think each of you guys are probably packing two in your respective tournament tournament decks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, alien stiletto uh, had about I think there's maybe five, and then the crash cart is also somewhere around there. Um, Maybe. Yeah, so interesting, interesting. But most of the times we've seen the hospital crash card, it does seem like it's getting sold more so than it's getting put in the hospital. But uh, understandably, it's just it all yeah. is dependent upon when it comes up in the course of the game, whether it, that that dictates whether it serves as CP fodder or a handy way of healing your agents. Should uh, uh, the most ruthless adversary. Of the commercial release cards get played on them. Say it again. The Manitou. The Manitou. Right? He's the Manitou stalks his prey. Brutal. <laughs> he is brutal. So it, it is no surprise that a lot of people included that particular healing card in their decks because if the Manitou gets played on your agent, they are stuck. Yep. Until the healing card comes up. So that's a pretty good one to have. And yeah, the Manitou is the most recurring um, adversary. In, in these decks, including yours, Jonathan. Not mine, however. <laughs> uh, actually, I, I'll go ahead. Yeah, full disclosure. I only included keyword evolutionary adversaries in this deck. And combat cards that are specific to evolutionary adversaries. So, um, yeah, you won't have... Yeah, um, it's a... It's it's kind of nice. It's always nice when I find that I do something like that. Like I have only evolutionary, and then I I go into the game, and my opponent has like Chuck Burke. I'm like, ha! You're not gonna be able to use that token tonight. So anyway, but I do know you have. I do know you have at least one occult adversary. Still, <laughs> you have the Manitou. That's it. I think that is your only adversary in there. But yeah, good thing I got Chuck Burke on my team. So. I think it's time we carry on, right? Let's, um, let's, uh, oh, uh, hard evidence came up uh, in my, my pool there. So I'm going to, uh, use that now and get me five tokens added to my pool, but three once we factor in the cost of that, so send that to the trash bin. Now let's, uh, skip on past healing, skip past requisition once again, and we'll head into deployment, but Insofar as I'm going to keep everyone out in the field at this point, and you're all going to stick together. We do currently have Miller's Grove, Massachusetts, currently on the mat with a bluff on it from the previous round. But I think what we're going to do, Jonathan, is I'm going to also put down another site, and that's going to be Dead Horse, Alaska. And I'm going to use Agent Mo Box's token to pay for that one because uh, it has the keyword alien investigation on it. And actually, Kevin Morris is going to generate one because it had, well, it actually has both evidence collection and alien investigation, but um, just it's, it's only going to generate one regardless of both keywords being present. So we have. 
Dead Horse Alaska Jonathan. It's multi-site with keywords alien investigation and evidence collection as previously stated, but should the site investigation be successful, be looking at either an affiliation or a result question. And as a reminder, Miller's Grove is a result site. So both sites are result. Gotcha. Um, I'm going to put a bluff on that one. So we got a bluff on Dead Horse, Alaska. Let's see here. Oh, no, I'm the one wishing for a Langley. Uh, well, I think what I'm going to do. Okay. So we're going to. Let me see. Let me read this card because it's a little text heavy. Um, okay. So let's say we head to Dead Horse, Alaska, Jonathan, and I'm going to once again leave Miller's Grove off to the side with that bluff on it. So everyone's going to Dead Horse, Alaska. They thankfully remember to bring their mittens. We're going to be applying our alien investigation skills to this site, for which uh, Mulder has four, Mobox has two, and Dr. Charles Burke has one, for a total of seven. And I'm going to go ahead and state that should, I'm going to use the condition on this card. So if you ask if the result is manipulation of evidence, the skill, actually, well, before I say that, let me just double check that there is of the seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to go with that. Yeah. If I, I'm going to use the, I'm going to utilize the condition that if I ask if the result is manipulation of evidence, the skill check prerequisite is four. So I only need to make four for this site. Stating that now, and um, before you reveal your bluff, I'm just going to go ahead and use um, surfing the net for two. And that's going to take my pull down to 11. And I have a team make a computer four skill check. And guess what? Charles Burke does that alone. If successful, draw three cards from your opponent's bureau deck and choose one to place in your bureau section face down. And then I'm going to get to place the other two back on top of your bureau deck in the order of my choosing, Jonathan. So, what what three cards are sitting on the top of your bureau deck, sir? Nasty surprise, Nurse Owens, and Nurse Owens. <laughs> How about that? Okay. Well, all right. So, what's going to happen is is that um, I may use the chosen card when appropriate, but I must still pay the cost. We'll return the card to the owning player's discard pile once it's been used, and leave the Card in play on top. Of, yeah, the card. I'm, I'm going to put this card on top. I'll get to that once I choose a card. So let's see. I was hoping maybe you had a link or something come up, but or not deep. the case. <laughs> uh, it, it, insofar as it would take it away from you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess I'll take one of the Nurse Owens cards and use. Yeah, we'll do, we'll use that one. Um, so I'm going to place. Uh, da, 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 I need a card I'm here. Put it over here by itself. All right, so and, uh, so let me read the rest of it for you. Um, so I'm going to leave the surfing the net card on top of the Nurse Owens card on my section here, and it's going to serve as a reminder. Um, and so this card at this point is considered an event resource, so you could uh, use like a, a fro hickey or an alien experience depending on what round it is you can use a card to negate it because it's going to be treated as an event it's an event anyway because it's nurse owens but it's got the resource keyword attached to it which is what's going to keep it in play for subsequent rounds anyway uh so i, I digress let's let's see what that bluff is that you have there uh, do you need to specify the order my two cards go in yep oh yeah i'm sorry uh just hey, i'll do it random if you want me to yeah, that's fine. Uh, it, it, they don't. It, it, I don't have a preference on them because of you know one CP fodder and the other one gets you CP. So <laughs> either way, <laughs> um, okay. yeah, they weren't uh, as brutal. Uh, they weren't like brutal cards or anything that were going to have me uh, shaking over here. Anyway, let's see what bluff you have on Dead Horse Alaska. Explosion. 
Oh, not the first time we've seen that from you, my friend. So go ahead and read that one off for the audience. Yeah, this is one we had to figure out and figure out and figure out. I think we all finally got it figured out. Yep. Play this so card. Yeah, play this card. Um, I figured out the modifier aspect, the multiplier aspect. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Play this card to cause one point of damage to every agent in a team for each conspiracy cost card discarded from your hand up to a maximum of three points of damage. Mm -hmm. Or the number of conspiracy cost cards discarded and the cost is two times X. Two times X. So I ask you, sir, how many conspiracy cards are you going to discard? Two. Two. Okay, so you're going to pay... A total of four, but minus one because you did have it face down, so you're only pay three for it. And on my end, that's going to inflict two damage each to my team of agents here. What I would my my kingdom for another conspiracy card. (laughs) Yeah, because then you would have been able to take out Burke Manners. Um, wouldn't have been able to stop my investigation though. But but nevertheless, um, it would have put a hurt on a lot of guys. Oh yeah, so for sure. So I'm going to put two damage each on all of my agents. Manners and Burke are hanging by a thread at this point. It took a, it took a, a nasty uh, hit from that explosion. But they're still standing still at least. Still in. They're still in. Anyway, um, carry on. You have, uh, looks like, five conspiracy points left. Uh, got anything else for me? That's all I can do. That's all you can do. Well, I can't say my team escaped that unscathed, but at least they're they're all still out in the field and no one's at the hospital. So small blessings. But as I stated going into this investigation phase, if this site investigation is successful, I will be asking if the result is manipulation of evidence. And wouldn't you know it, it was successful. So Jonathan, I'll say again, is by any chance your X-Files result manipulation of evidence? Yes, it is. Wow, this is uh, this is quite a night I'm having. Pretty atypical. <laughs> wow, I got you down to two now, Jonathan. I gotta say, like this is. I mean, it, it's not. Uh, it's not an indictment of your deck. It's just that my questions are just spot on. So, I, yeah, you got two, two at this point. Um, but. Damn it, I don't want to guess yet because I want you to really get a ch- chance to play. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to 50-50 that. I'm just going to, you know, give you at least another round to uh, um, to try to see if you can uh, get see closer. See if I can whittle something down. <laughs> What's that? See if I can whittle something down. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, yeah, this is, you know, I'm having fun. You're getting a chance to test out your deck. But this, I think this is kind of one of those extreme cases where the first two questions from your opponent are correct. I, I mean, that's a, it's kind of an anomaly. Um, so um, I don't think you have to worry about that necessarily too much. But th- this game is just just chaotic in that sense. Anyway, so no identity question as of this point. We're going to head into debriefing unless you got anything you want to do before. And no, nope, but let me see, you got seven. Oh. And I have a total of seven cards in my hand, and I'm going to keep all of them. Ready to pass it back to you, sir? All right, I've got five, so I'm good. All right, uh, draw the three card. Let me draw six. three card. And I need to generate some res. Which... Let's see. Crycheck, I guess, isn't participating this time in that. Nope. Because he's got to come out of the hospital first, so that generates four. It's not bad. No. no. Not when you're sitting on, well, now 11. And then, let's see. I am only going to take molders two. That's going to be it for me. 
And so then you. I pass to you to buy and sell. Thank you. And I'm going to sell No One's So Paranoid for five. I could have used that on that explosion, but knowing that I only had one conspiracy point left, I was really banking on tr trying to keep it <laughs> for this uh, next round. I'm also going to sell evasive maneuvers for four, and so that's going to take my pool up to ten. Okay, what are we going to do here? I don't have a whole lot to work with here, Jonathan, so I think I'm going to have to buy five, five cards. It's not much, but hopefully I can... No, I should have kept that nasty... I should have taken the nasty... Oh, oh! I did. I forgot to do that. I could have sold the Nurse Owens. Never mind. I'm gonna, I'll do it next time. That's on me for forgetting. I'll do it next time. I don't know if you negate it. Shoot. Oh, I did have a blue plate, though. Um, blue plate came up. Yeah, we'll do it now. Just play blue plate. Play this card next to... Uh, You've, we've seen this already once tonight on Jonathan's End, but I'll read it again. Play this card and flip over the next card in your bureau deck. If this card is playable this turn, you may do so for zero cost. If you do not play it this turn, move the card to your discard pile. And we're looking at... Uh, Rohicky. Rohicky. Nope, but Alien Experimentation, which also negates an event. So that's my card. All right, so I'll add that one to yeah. my hand. But yeah, I have I to discard it at the end of this I, turn. I played Frohicky on it. Well, I haven't played the card. Are you negating Blue Plate? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. We're negating yeah. blue plate then. So, all right. That gets that goes to the discard pile. And all right. I like that you played a card to negate an event that negates an event. Yeah. <laughs> well, you did, you negated the blue plate, but you know, in but in so far as it we negates, theoretically, event. wouldn't have known that it was going to negate an event. Uh, yeah. I got to pay for that, by the way. You do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's probably not a chance. Well, yeah, so if you played Fro Hickey, well, no. Yeah, if you played Fro Hickey this round, then I could have, yeah. So, I, yeah, you kind of preempted it, but at the cost of your Fro Hickey, though. Oh, that's that's okay. not you don't have another one. Uh, okay, so. I was asking, is the Nurse Owens treated like it's in your hand? Uh, no, Paul. The Surf in the Net states that um, you're going to leave this card in play on top of the card that you've chosen. Um, and then, so it's, it's gonna, it's, it's, it's treated as a resource card. So it's treat it's in play until I decide to use it. So the keyword resource was added to it and that's, what's going to keep it in play on the, in the, on the mat until at such time I decide to use it. Once I take the nurse Owens card and decide to use it, and then I discard the surfing the net, which is sitting on top of it as a reminder. All right, so Jonathan, uh, yeah, I've discussed, I've completed my portion of the briefing phase, and so now we are ready to see where your team's going. I don't Instead really, I don't really need to do any healing, nope. because uh, he's not wounded. But I need to move in. But uh, I do need, and I don't need to requisition. But now at deployment, I will bring him out of the hospital. Yep. Uh, everybody will be in the field. And I will play. Browning Montana and use Molder's last token to do that. Sounds good. And Browning Montana is an occult investigation with an emotive question, yes? That's correct. Nice. Uh, I don't think I have, yeah, no. Oh, no, I do have a bluff, actually. Yeah. One bluff. Okay. Uh, 
going to send everybody. Everyone's going in. So tell us about your team's occult investigation skills. Uh, Mulder and Holstein are the ones that make the occult investigation skills. Mulder has three. And Holstein has four to make a total of seven. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Some pretty good occult investigation going on there. And that's, you said, is a motive. Mm, so that's not looking too good. It's not looking too good either. All right, so I'm going to play the bluff now, and that's going to be one of my two nasty surprises. It's just going to add five tokens to my pool. Once I factor in the cost, though, I'm only going to have three, which is going to take it up to eight. Any cards you want to play at this point? Let's see... Yes, I think I will. I have no idea which one it is. I'm seeing that grin on your face, and uh, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure the card starts with D and ends with Eep Throat. Oh no, it does not. I wish oh, it did. That? Oh, it oh it then I'm curious. What card are you going to play? I think I am going to pay three and play it's another three. Throw Hickey. And do and knock out the uh, whole thing with the nurse Owens. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I was not going to get to use it until I got back to being the conspiracy player. So, all right. So, nurse Owens is discarded. I was using my Molder agent as a placeholder for that. So, surfing the net is gone. Ski. So, it's two fro hickeys out out of the way there. I actually, for me, I feel like that was a pretty good deal because I got rid of both of your fro hickeys in this round. Right. I'm looking at it. I don't have a lot of, uh, you know, guesses left. So I need to take anything that gives potentially conspiracy points out of play. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, um, unless you've got anything else to play, I should make that skill check. I don't have anything that's going to stop that investigation, Jonathan. All right, so we make the occult investigation four plus and ask a motive question. Now we got to pick a good motive. Hmm. <coughs> Is your X Files motive survival? I can neither confirm nor deny that assumption. Oh, I had eight. I had eight. Just enough to pay for deny everything. Have not used that card in quite a long time. It's so damn expensive, but thankfully I had just enough. Bought him out my conspiracy pool, but nevertheless, I stopped you and I did it safely knowing that both of your frohickeys are now in the trash bin. So <laughs> that was, man, you had two frohickeys in your hand at that point. So. Yeah, that would that would have been a terrible. I kind of wonder, would you burn and deny everything unless it was? <laughs> I don't even know. I really don't even know. So let's. Uh, oh no! Don't you, don't don't say you know you don't say. I'm not saying. I just was like, yeah, no, that's a good point. <laughs> But nevertheless, I just really was excited to play that card for once um, because I, again, I have not played it in so very long. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't know that I've ever played it. To be downside honest, downside though, is I'm kind of now susceptible to a deep throat because unless I get my other one. So, but hey, it was still fun to play it though. Nonetheless, stave off your investigation just a little bit longer. Well, yeah, anyway, that's, so, that takes us to the briefing. That side is discarded. Does. And since and, I did play Deny Everything, that does take my hand down to seven, so I'm going to keep everything else at this point. I'm at five, so I'm good, so I turn it over to you, sir. Sounds good, and I'll draw a free card, and we got ourselves a new round going. Possibly the last one, Jonathan, so you're going to have to put everything in it to stop me, because I got you down to two at this point. Um, so, once again... Despite all the damage inflicted on them from your explosion last round, my team is still going to be generating five resource points, and that's going to take my pool up to 16. Mike's not happy about that explosion, Jonathan. He's like, you better not have damaged that pewter. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah. Mm, 
I could use a little bit more in the way of resource cards. So I'll pay, I'll pay four to buy four cards. So that leaves me with 12 in the pool. Over to you, sir. Yeah, we we'll just have to go for broke on this one. So I'm going to sell, yes. I'm going to sell Nurse Owens for six. Shocker. X How for you three. And running from the LOA for two. So that's 11. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to buy five. And I know you have a nasty surprise in your hand as well. So you're going to be able to get a little bit more in your bank with that. Hmm. Shame this card came up now. Well, okay. So let's carry on then. Uh, we have, oh, oh, no, 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 not, not yet. Friend in the FBI. Don't want to leave briefing without playing that first. So friend in the FBI is on the mat. And because we're still in briefing, I'm going to have that option of using the first two to pay for the card. So friend of the FBI is going to get eight tokens on it, not the 10. Because I've taken the first two off of them and those convert into resource points. So I've got eight more and I can use up to two per briefing phase. All right, now we can move on to healing. And so uh, since my agents are in the hospital, I, I'm not going to be able to actually do much in the way of healing them without any healing cards. So we're going to skip past requisition as well. And for deployment, everyone's going to stay out in the field. And for case assignment, we still do have Miller's Grove sitting here on the mat with a bluff on it. I'm also going to put down Arecibo, Puerto Rico. That is an alien investigation or computer site prerequisite. Question possibilities are affiliation and method. I'm going to use Mo Box to pay for it because it has the keyword alien investigation, and Kevin Morris is going to generate one because it, once again, has the keyword alien investigation. I am going to put two bluffs on that one. Sounds good. All right, so Arcebo has two bluffs. Miller's Grove has one bluff. Hmm. I think what we're going to do is we're going to set Arcebo aside with the two bluffs on it. And we're just going to send everyone to... Oh, damn, that was a good play, Jonathan, because I already know your X-Files result. Yeah, well, I'll still get the identity question nonetheless. So, yeah, you might live to it'll be 50 50. So you might live to fight another day. So anyway, yeah, everyone's everyone's going to Miller's Grove. And um, again, it's alien investigation four result question. Mulder's got the four, uh, but Mo Box and Chuck Burke are also providing a little bit of padding in case I need it. So I've got seven alien investigation going for this site. Let's see that bluff. How many cards do you have in your hand? Oh, quite a few, and I think you're about to play limited choices. So let's see, you got ten. That's it. Limited, limited choices. choices, and you do have quite a bit in your conspiracy pool. So how much are you going to pay to make me discard cards from my hand? Well, make us. You know what? I'm going to pay nine and make you discard them all. Because even though you're going to get to take you're going to get to take that shot, I can't stop you from doing the investigation. But nope, no, you can't, Jonathan. However, I did pull Langley. my Langley at the start of this round, so Langley is coming to my rescue for two. That's it. That's, That's all it. I yeah, you you kind of went for broke on that one. So even if I didn't play him, I still would get the question though. Which right. again, it's. The result question I already know your X file is your X files result is manipulation of evidence, but that's not the point. The point is we're here to see if I can identify your X file in a 50 50 guess. Uh, for, if anyone's watching, I have Jonathan currently 
narrowed down to the Grey Gores or alien listeners. First person to chime in is going to tell me which one I'm going to guess. So should I guess the Grey Gores or should I guess alien listeners? I'm going to leave the audience up to decide your fate on that, Jonathan. First one to chime in. Well, hopefully which I can guess more poorly than you have. <laughs> That's true. I've been doing so well with the guesswork tonight. I'm putting it on them. And Paul Cuomo is the first one to chime in. He says listeners. So I'm going to go with that one. Jonathan, is your X-File alien listeners? No, it's not. Paul, <laughs> uh, well, you let me down, my friend. You let me down. All but right, you know what so... It is now. I do know what it is now. Uh, so all I got to do is successfully investigate another site. So <laughs> let's send Miller's Grove to the trash bin. And Jonathan, you're living on borrowed time, my friend, but you're going to get another crack at my X-File going into this next round. And you're off to a pretty good start because I got zero conspiracy points. So I'm going to have to pitch a lot in order to, to stop you, sir. What do I have? Yeah, I was hoping you'd have no cards to pitch, too. That would have been good. No, I got cards to pitch. That's yeah. you know, one saving grace on this. But uh, uh, so yeah, thing, how, you should. You probably have to do. You, do you have any? I need do to have some stuff. So I have. Yeah, a few too many. And there's not really. Anything. I can't play anything right now. So let's see. Let's get rid of. Um, we'll get rid of squeeze, which is sucks because I'm about to take on the conspiracy player role. And that leaves me with, I think I got eight, so I got to get rid of one more. Mm. It's no good. Let's sell, or I'm sorry, not sell. Let's discard. Road trip. Back to you. Yeah, I'm I'm at five cards, so I'm good. So it's time to draw that. Hopefully, it's only the Gregors. Then why didn't you say the Gregors? No, I was kidding. I didn't, I wasn't feeling one of one it over was, the other on that. Well, that was why I picked it. It was one of mine from the from the first three games. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, they'll never, yeah. they'll, they'll, never they'll, never, they'll never think it's that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was uh, yeah. I was keeping track of those, but I yeah, I would not have thought. I figured you just chose randomly, but no, good good call on that. Yeah, that was. My non-random thing didn't work out well for me. <laughs> All right, so uh, you got your free card, sir. So you're uh, you're ready to kick off another briefing phase. Um, and we do have a new, a brand new subscriber, uh, Zephyr Deer. Um, anyone seen the Lone Gunman? And uh, well, we did see a couple of Fro Hickeys and a Langley uh, Byers. He's uh, he's taking a sabbatical. Um, you know, he, he's. <laughs> He's got his face in front of a computer, uh, you know, all day long. One computer. <laughs> so, yeah, no, we've seen two out of the three Lone Gunman Zephyr. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, they, the, the other two that have shown up have been pretty crucial plays at the right time, wouldn't you say, Jonathan? Well, now you did see, uh, we did see all three of them when you sold No One So Paranoid. Oh, that is true. That is true. But it was a brief appearance because, yeah, they were just going straight to the trash bin. Looking here in some of my other cards that I was digging out, I was, I've, it's not, I don't have one in my deck, uh, but, and you already know that. Uh, but I had a long gunman card out here that I was going to pull out. Oh, now I'm not finding it. Oh, well. I was just going to put it up on the screen for him. But anyway. Uh, one that's signed by all three of the gentlemen. Oh, I do have that. Uh, that no one's so paranoid signed by all three. Uh, Very nice. That's, that's in a book in there, though. I have to go dig that out. Uh, but anyway, let's see. So I drew my free card. I need to generate res, and everybody's contributing now, which is good. Yep, six resource points going in there. You got yourself nine. 
Yeah. Nine resource points. How do you want to spend that? Well, two, obviously, but you want to get a little more with that? Yeah. Let's see. Um, I think just those two will be good. Just the two from Mulder. All right, so seven's pretty good. Hopefully, that's your lucky number for this uh, lap, for this round. Let's head into. Oh no, no, I got to do. Some, you got to do some buying on first. That would be, would be a fatal mistake if I'd forgotten to do that. Okay, shotgun for six and Frohickey for three. I didn't want to sell Mr. Frohickey, but I'm. Uh, I'm ble I need some resource or sorry, I need some conspiracy points. So six and three takes my conspiracy pool up to nine. And hmm. We'll do four cards. I'm going to play Relentless Pursuit. Ah, shucks. <laughs> All right, go ahead and read that for the audience. Uh, play to prevent the opposing player from drawing cards after the player has paid, but before the card's drawn. X equals the number of cards the opposing player has paid to draw. So in this case, four. Okay. I did see them, so should I just put them at the bottom of my... I was a little too quick to draw. Just put them at the bottom yeah. of my deck. What do you want me to do? You can shuffle them in. I'm not worried about it that much. Okay, so I lose the conspiracy points, but um, I, I don't get the cards either. So, ah, relentless pursuit. It's, uh, it may have just saved your bacon. Maybe. We'll find out. I still got five cards in my hand, though. All right. And next I'm going to play Hard Evidence for two. And it gives me five, unless you're going to stop me. Uh, so I get a net gain of three. And then let's see. What else from here? <laughs> Uh, let's see from there I am going to pay two to play grid pattern search mm. you going to fish out of sight no oh maybe a fro hickey yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's been yeah. two of them pretty quickly. Uh, so going back to Zephyr Deer's question. Uh, yeah, anyone seen a lone gunman? Yeah, there's no one come up right now. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's see. That was a whole lot before we even got to the healing and requisition, which I'm not right. going to do anything yet. Everybody will stay deployed in the field. Yep. Um, And I am going to play the site Lake Okaboji for two. All right. That's an alien investigation and a motive site. Yes. Correct. It's alien investigation and asks a motive question. That's right. And let's see. Yep. I believe that's what I'll do. Okay. And I don't have any bluffs to go on that one. Send them in. Send them in. Okay. Well, we definitely make this one. Uh, Mulder's got four. Crycheck's got three. Lamana, or I mean, not Lamana. Uh, Albert Holstein's got two. 
So that makes nine um, to ask a motive question. I got nothing. Okay. Well, that was definitely a good time to play Relentless Pursuit. Yep. And you got yourself a motive question. So what's it going to be, sir? You did ask me survival last time, and I did. Uh, you deny everything. I denied that. Let's see. And I still want to know that. Well, you know what? I don't know. Is your motive ideology? My X Files motive is not ideology. Well, that gets us all the way down to 26. Uh, not too bad. Well, I've got to take a shot. My, well, if you take a shot and you get it wrong, then it's over. Well, yeah, that's true. But then if I don't stop you, then it's over too. Yeah, I think you best. Yeah, I you're think right. I should not. Yeah. I've got yeah. a better yeah. shot of stopping you than I do guessing a one out of 26. 26. That's yeah. True. Yep, definitely. Definitely. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I'm holding five, so I'm. Uh, let me discard this site. I'm good to turn it over to you, sir. I'm holding five as well. Back to you. Or no, back to me, right? Yeah, back to me. Yep, back to me. Free card. And once again, we're going to be generating five resource points for my team, and it's going to take it up to 16, and I'm going to take two from friend in the FBI, and that's going to take my resource pool up to 18. And I really need a site because I'm I'm not sitting on one right now, Jonathan. So I think I'm gonna buy a lot here. Uh six cards. That's gonna leave me with twelve. What are you selling? I'm going to sell hospital crash car and shotgun for 10. Uh, and I will buy four. Sounds good. That's we that's leaving eight in your pool. That's right. Okay, it's enough to do some damage. But let's carry on. So we're gonna skip past healing, but again, uh, um. Everybody's wounded. <laughs> Everyone's wounded, and Burke and Detective Manners are again. They're they're not doing so well. They're they're a little green in the face, but they're still on two feet. We're gonna skip past requisition as well, because yeah, I don't have any equipment anyway. Uh, so deployment. Let's just keep everyone in the field, and maybe this will be the last hurrah. Uh, so for case assignment, let's. Send the team to Lake Okoboji. <laughs> feels like we were just there, weren't we, Jonathan? It feels that way. Yep. And as you recall, that is an alien investigation, four plus site prerequisite with a motive question. And I'm going to use Mulder's last token to pay for that one. And I'm going to generate one to my pool, courtesy of Kevin Morris, because it has the keyword alien investigation. Uh, wait any bluffs. And we also have uh, our SIBO in play, which has currently two bluffs on it. Uh, let's see. That uh, Okoboji's a result. Um, I'm sorry, a motive site, right? Motive on Lake Okoboji, and our SIBO is affiliation and method, of which I already know your X Files affiliation. I am going to place. On Okaboji, I'm going to put three bluffs down on it. Good Lord, sir. Some of them might be true, though. At any rate. Um, at any rate, let's let's send the team oh no no no! hold on hold on because I, I want to make sure i play this right again so i i'm going to play my second alien discretion 
and that's playing on a team about to investigate a site with alien investigation as a prerequisite discard all bluffs or discard all cards assigned as bluffs at that site x equals the number of bluffs at that site and the cost is x plus one so why don't we actually i'm i'm let's let's do it i'm gonna pay four uh it's play alien discretion on lake okaboji so all three of those bluffs are going to the card pile jonathan and what were they Oh, one of two of them were real bluffs. Uh, computer yeah. access denied, which was useless because you can make a computer useless. four easily. Uh, the other one was the Sandman, which was also useless because it's a result site, and you yep. didn't have either of them result sites. And the other one was a real bluff. It was Section Chief Blevins, uh, which would have been useful, right? Uh, or uh, McGrath. McGrath. sorry, sorry. Yep. Okay. He would have actually done something. <laughs> he would have actually done something, yeah. All right. So, let's, uh, yeah, we've, we're sending everyone to Lake Okoboji, and we're going to be applying our alien investigation skills to it. Once again, Mulder has four, Mobox has two, Chuck Burke has one for a total of seven. Jonathan, I have no cards I want to play at this point. I'm turning it over to you. I have, uh, let's see, what, uh, you know what? Let's use Lamana. Let's, let's got to do it. Nope. Uh, oh, I can't. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, I forget his is always investigating. I always forget that. Yep. Good He's try. He's the quirky one. Very quirky. The most text heavy agent effect, and it's yeah. still got some bugs that we can't reconcile. And of course, I can't Holstein anything because he lost his token. So I thought I can't do anything. Oh no! I didn't want to go out on a whimper, but <laughs> nevertheless, it was a uh, it was too overdue. Since uh, you know, I, all I had to do was just guess the right one. Um, so we have successfully investigated Lake Okaboji, and therefore we do get a motive question. Jonathan, is your X Files motive security? Yes, I'm afraid it is. Afraid it is. Yeah, no brainer on that one. Jonathan, is your X File the Gregors? It is, yes. yes. And by any chance, is that a Truth Is Out There edition promo? No, this one's not. No, uh, it's the premiere one. It one of, but I know you've got probably like two or three of them over there or in 20. your household. <laughs> or 20. <laughs> 20? Jesus. Yeah, I got a lot uh, of them. I'm getting one of those. All right, sir. Well, that's a game. Um, but I, again, I want to say that I do not want I, I do not want that to be treated as an indictment of your deck because what happened was is I just got the first two questions correct which is, again it is a it's an anomaly and we really don't see that happen too often so I don't think that should uh, be taken uh, as a sign that you really need to revise a whole lot from your deck well and I mean um, one of the things you know that you you see a lot of not only do you get uh, I know in games we've played in the past, I didn't. I, I usually didn't investigate very many sites. You would usually stop my investigations. But, but in this case, you did. Yep. In fact, you got two questions off of me, right? And and then, well, I, technically, I got three. You just got to answer one with deny with the deny everything. That's true. Yeah, I was sitting on a deny everything, and I had nothing else in my hand that was going to stop you at that point. So yeah, that was. Uh, the fort, uh, a good pull at that point, but yeah, and you also you got the identity. Well, the identity question, um, you got, you know, helps narrow one more down. So it took me down to twenty six uh, possibilities for what my X file was. Uh, so you want to venture a guess? What it might be? Well, no, it's less than twenty six, right? Because you took a motive question. So let me see. What I, got. I don't even know how many you have me down to. This probably like eighteen. I was down to 26. Uh, that was before the motive question, right? That's what that I, it's 26 right now. So, oh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Was your X file Eve? No, but you had the right first letter. Said Plunge. Oh, Ed. Okay. Didn't someone have it? Oh, that was, was just, mine. That was one of mine. What's that? That was one of mine. It was one of yours. I was about to ask. Did you use that one in one of your games recently? Yes. 
Yes. Yeah, it was. I think it was the one with Kurt, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so we both uh, we both uh, were inspired by your three games yeah. in this to uh, choose your hit to choose the hidden X file. So Studio Squim just asked, "Is it over already?" Yes, David. Yes, it is over. I did identify Jonathan's X file, um, but again, it was uh, just on the pure luck that I got the first two questions correct. Um, which, as you know, that doesn't happen very often. So it was uh, pretty much. Uh, I mean, it wasn't a runaway game. I mean, there were like Jonathan. You did have some rounds where you were getting questions. Um, I wasn't able to stall all of your investigations cons- consistently, and you didn't get a deep throat. Unfortunately, yeah. I do. I do wonder how buried in your deck was he? Was he by oh, chance? I, I, I already started mixing them up. Ah, oh, that's all right. Uh, that's all right. And uh, oh, David, I thought you were here earlier. He said he just got here. Oh, no, he was here earlier. Yeah, I might still be able to tell you how deep it was. Yeah, David, sorry. I thought you were oh, like... Oh, it was pretty deep. You know, they were both... They were I both must, really deep. I must have not shuffled this great either because they were both right next to each other. <laughs> uh, David wants to know, who won the signed Detective Manners? Uh, that would be Daryl. Um, Daryl Haskett, I believe his name is. Um, he was the only one who... Uh, he, he was the only non-contender who posted a comment in the live chat uh, prior to the game started. So, Daryl, you got yourself a uh, assigned manners coming your way. So, I, I do know that you acknowledged um, that. Yeah, you're going to send me your you're gonna send me your uh, your address, and I'll get that sent out to you tomorrow. Uh, I've got a sh- half day at work tomorrow, so I'll be able to get that out um, before the mail hits. But that's not the only thing I'm mailing off. Um, for I am going to be saying uh, sayonara to the lovely Fox Mulder pewter, and I'll just put that up on the screen just once more. So and can gaze upon this. Granted, you know, it's not going to be gone forever. You can always uh, tune into Matt and Mike's X Files CCG and uh, see it there. But, uh, whoops, almost dropped it. This thing is heavy. It probably would have left a crater in my floor. Um, so, um, so yes, I'm going to be sending this back to Mike and uh, you'll see it there. Um, I should hopefully get to him pretty quickly and make sure um, get some speedy shipping so it's not uh, in, waiting in the mail for too long. So Mike, it's on its way back to you, my friend. In one piece, let's hope. It uh, it did get a little dinged up uh, thanks to Jonathan's uh, explosion earlier, but it, it's okay. It's okay. I'll polish it a little. I'll give it a little polish. Uh, maybe do a little spit shine. It survived. It wasn't. It wasn't yeah. obliterated. <laughs> David's like, no, I got to hold it just once. David, well, if you ever go visit Mike in Oregon, who's actually just you know one state down from you, you can always uh, can always uh, hold on to it there. So it's going to be sitting in the studio there, as it where it belongs. So yeah. Um, and actually, I do know, David, for a fact that you are going to be going and visiting Mike in Oregon at some point because you guys uh, are on a little mission with regards to the the big prize for the two the two top winners of the tournament. So, I don't know, Jonathan, you're probably not aware of that, are you? I don't think so. No. Okay, so that... Uh, I, I'm not going to say too much about it, but uh, yeah, David Peace and Mike are, the, are teaming up uh, for... Um, a little bit of a rendezvous, let's say. Now, David Peace is one of the contenders, but that does not, you know, his station, this is not going to influence his station in it. Um, but, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about once the, uh, the footage gets released. I don't, I, I did ask Mike if he wanted to drop any details earlier. He did it. So I'm going to take that to mean he wants to keep it close to the vest, uh, for the time being. So David will respect that. You and I will respect that and, uh, we'll await what, uh, footage you guys have for us when the time is right. So Jonathan's like, I'm intrigued. At what's going on yeah, here? Yeah, I'm ready now. now I'm like, <laughs> me too. I, I David first brought up the subject to me when he was here in Houston and we were playing a game. I was like, that would be awesome if you guys could make that happen. And yeah, I said, talk to Mike. And yeah, and you know, Mike uh, verified that that is going to happen. And so I'm not going to say anything more about it. 
we're just going to wait until until it happens. Um, let's see what else we got coming up. Uh, so we have. Uh, I don't. Let me see if I can pull the calendar up before we sign out today. Yeah, I think this is pretty up to date. But um, let me just share it. It's not the late. Yeah, no, it's not the latest version because uh, actually Dave Meyer and John Wood did. Uh, Dave Meyer and John Wood did reschedule their their game. So yeah, I don't have the latest version of the calendar in front of me, but I do want to point out that the very next game that we do have coming up on the docket is going to be um, tomorrow at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That is going to be um, Paul, uh, who was actually in our um, in our live chat this evening. Thank you for tuning in, Paul. You are going to be taking on Alistair Hennon over in Scotland, and that is actually going to be Alistair's third matchup. So he will be completing his pre-playoff games Tomorrow, again, that's 3 o'clock Central Standard Time. That's going to be on Alien Investigation. So uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And uh, hit that notifications button. And, of course, give the videos the likes. Do me a solid. And also tomorrow we have not just that matchup, but we have a second matchup happening. David Peace, who is also uh, tuning in uh, in the live chat right now. David is going to be playing his first of three pre-playoff games against Chris Richardson. And uh, that is going to be Chris's third matchup for the for the regular season. So we're going to see the we're going to see some people wrapping up their pre playoff games, Jonathan, and then like you, they will be toying around with what they're going to do with their decks while yeah, waiting I, for the playoffs. I, 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 <laughs> All right, so tell me, like, what, I mean, without giving away too much, because obviously you do have a tournament that you're, you know, um, buying to win. So what are your thoughts? You got three, you did three games. You did this fourth one. Unfortunately, it didn't go well for you. But again, we're going to chalk that up to mostly just being uh, luck of my uh, question, the luck from my questions. But what are you feeling? Um, a big part of it, uh, obviously, uh, I didn't draw what I wanted to draw. A lot of it. Um, but, and two, like you said, uh, the questions. Uh, you know, if you get those questions right, especially two of them early, it's almost done. Uh, I mean, you know, that's, that's a big part. Um, but I still, you know, I didn't get to get to a lot of the thick of the deck. Um, I've considered shrinking it down a little bit, but I mean, because in that uh, in that play, I was halfway, you know, almost halfway through the deck, and I didn't see a Langley or a deep throw. Uh, yeah, so I, I may have just not shuffled very well. <laughs> that could be a big part of it too. And um, your your deck's not that oversized either. It's I think it's somewhere in the sixty seventy range, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's about eighty. Oh, right. eight, oh, yeah, take it back. Yeah, eighty nine. So what am I talking about? There's fourteen decks. I'm trying to keep track of here. Come on, what do you want from me? <laughs> so yeah, eight, I mean, actually, my deck is about the same size of, as yours, actually. So, um, uh, but again, I make a point of stacking um, two copies of all those crucial cards. And so for this particular tournament deck, like all but two of the sites in here are Alien Investigation. So that means that when I pull Kevin Morris out. Kevin Morris is going to be able to generate one for each of those alien investigation sites. The other two sites that are not alien investigation are evidence collection. So again, Kevin's going to generate one for any site that I put on the map. And the sites also have the keyword occult investigation. So Mo Box is going to pay for every single one of the sites that come up, unless I decide I just want to use Mulder's token for those, those mono sites that cost two. So that was the strategy for this deck. So just Keeping it nar narrowed just to pretty much one uh, one particular site prerequisite. Alien Investigation, the the three big players on the team have Alien Investigation skills, and plus I got Manners who could call out a witness to add to Alien Investigation should I need it. So have my had my bases covered with it in any event. You know, with Mulder on my team being the lead agent, um, he's going to be obviously the primary target for you know most of like for most of my opponents you know jonathan plays an adversary or you play section chief mcgrath like you were like you did you did have him on that last site and you would have used him to take molder 
to the to, uh, to the bureau so he wouldn't be able to contribute his skills so at that point i still had my backup with um manners who could get me a witness to fill in for Mulder's absence and so that i mean is part and parcel of like most of the decks that you guys see me play with on this channel so um so this is going to be i'll just call it this is my tourney deck um my would be tourney deck so i'll be getting an uncut sheet uh, made up uh, with this deck here that I used to best the lead contender for for this tournament. So that's it's uh I don't, I don't know if I'll get another chance to do an exhibition game, but uh if any of the other contenders watching kind of want to test their deck out a little bit more before you decide to refine it, I'm opening it up that I'm opening it up for all of you guys. If you guys want to um take a break from one of your three games or if you got a lull while you're waiting for one of your opponents to um, to sync up their schedule with yours, reach out to me. We can do another exhibition game. You know, if we've got a few days waiting in between matchups. So it's out there for everyone. Um, and, oh, Daryl, uh, Daryl, I want to congratulate you again. So this signed Detective Manners card is coming to you, my friend. So, I'll, again, I'll get that shipped out to you tomorrow. And uh, with any luck, uh, it'll be they're arriving soon i actually don't know where he where he lives so i should hold off on that to see how far it's got to travel so <laughs> yeah yeah shipping we're at the mercy of shipping so anyway uh so yeah jonathan it was a hell of a game um and uh i, I wish all of my uh, guests like all, i wish all of my games would have that stellar guest work <laughs> otherwise yeah i wouldn't have much of a problem <laughs> Um, etching out a w so uh david peace has one thing he says it's the xl ccg what if what if steven was in the tournament yeah so like i said yeah would be deck and so we saw a little bit of that tonight obviously we didn't see the everything that was in there but i think everyone who's watched some of the episodes on this channel they're pretty they're pretty used to seeing me going at it with an alien investigation theme deck usually some of the agents change around a little bit. Like I said, I usually have hosting on there. But I just didn't want it to be a team that's like Mulder hosting. And it's like looking exactly like Jonathan's. I, so I did take that into consideration when building it. So, and as I said, no deep throats were in here too, because I'm like, I just clutch card or crutch card, not my thing. And nobody got to use a crutch card tonight. Yeah, so this was again it wasn't a tournament matchup, but, you know. But actually, so it is, this is what it looks like when you don't play deep throw to yeah. to get a win. It's still fun, but um, obviously, when there's stakes on the line, I don't, you know, I don't blame anyone for wanting to include a deep throw in there. So, Jonathan, it is uh, coming up on eleven, and I and each of us probably have work tomorrow. I know I do, but uh, I think it's probably about time we shut the door to this X Files office for the evening. But again, I want to thank. Uh, you for availing yourself and i want to thank everyone for tuning in uh, to watch this matchup live again if you haven't already done so please hit that subscribe button because uh it goes a goes a long way uh you know to i i mean it re i really do appreciate um you know it's um I, i'm really grateful for any of the um the support and that's that goes a long way to support what we do on here so jonathan thanks again it was a great it was a great game sir absolutely it was fun and uh once again um we'll say goodbye to pewter molder for the time being so be sure to look out for him on matt and mike's x file ccg and again thank you all for watching and please be sure to tune in next time for another edition of alien investigations <laughs>